to define the derivative for a vector valued function of a scalar variable in other words of curves now the definition of the derivative in this scenario is rather straightforward so throughout this part we will be considering intervals i which are subset of r and we are considering a function f from i to rn now since this is a function taking values in rn we can write down the function in terms of its component functions f1 to fn where each fi is a function from i to r now fix a point t in i we want to define the derivative of the function f at this point t we define the derivative to be quite simply the vector whose component functions are nothing but f1 prime of t f2 prime of t dot 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 fn prime of t so to differentiate a vector valued function of a scalar variable just differentiate each one of its components of course this definition makes sense only when the derivative is f1 prime dot 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 fn prime exist so this is as you can expect an utterly straightforward extension of the usual notion of the derivative to a more general setting and most of the facts about this scenario is going to be quite straightforward and is going to be left to you as exercises so one remark i would like to make usually we use the variable x but here i have used the variable t this is intentional this serves a psychological aid that these functions f of a scalar variable taking vector values this these are supposed to be curves so we can imagine the function f as describing the path traversed by a particle over time of course here we have the weirdness the time could even be negative i leave it up to you to imagine what this could mean the derivative gives the tangent vector of the path at time t this is should be familiar to you from a basic course on multivariable calculus of course when you draw pictures you draw the tangent vector as emanating from the point f of t this is not actually accurate when you just write down a vector you actually mean that the tail of the vector is at the origin so to be 100% precise if you want to write down the i mean if you want to draw the pictures that you are you have no doubt seen in elementary books on multivariable calculus the vector that you usually call the tangent vector is f of t plus f prime of t so the vector f prime of t which is the derivative as been translated to the point f of t so here is a picture that illustrates what's going on you have this particle that is moving in space like this okay at the starting point it's at f of a at the ending point it's at f of b we are focusing on one particular point t it takes the value f of t and i have drawn somewhat approximately what that tangent vector f prime of t is going to be of course the real f prime of t will be based at the origin okay the way i have drawn it um, it's not exactly accurate i've just parallelly moved the thing to the origin but because this is a three dimensional picture you must imagine this uh, vector in an appropriate way so this is the actual vector f of t plus f prime of t so this is a very rough and actually somewhat inaccurate picture of what is going on but it will convey the basic idea to you okay since everything is just doing things term wise you can expect that all the familiar properties of the derivative will be true so suppose you have two functions f comma g from i to rn let me recall once again that i will always denote a uh, interval in r suppose you have these two functions f comma g that are differentiable at the point t then the sum f plus g the dot product f dot g which i want you to recall from your elementary studies in undergraduate lambda f where lambda is a scalar these are all differentiable at t with the following properties the derivative of f plus g is nothing but the derivative of f plus the derivative of g both taken at the point t note these two are vectors so i can obviously add them the dot product f dot g that will give you a scalar valued function if you think about it so this is actually f dot g is going to be a regular one variable function taking values in r the derivative of that is nothing but f prime of t dot product g of t plus g prime of t dot product f of t and the third property is rather the easiest to prove the derivative of lambda f is just nothing but lambda f prime at t so these properties are rather easy and i'm going to leave it to you to check 
now i'm going to give you one more exercise and again this exercise is going to be rather easy show that if f from i to rn is differentiable then the function is continuous at t now it is at this point you must ask me okay i want me to show it is continuous but what is the metric on rn recall from our studies from metric spaces that it really doesn't matter which one you put which metric you put on rn provided it satisfies the basic property that sequences converge if and only if the component sequences converge it really wouldn't matter but when i don't mention what the metric on rn is you must always take the euclidean metric which we have studied in some detail when we studied metric spaces so you, under the euclidean metric on rn please show that any differentiable function is automatically continuous we also have a chain rule for such functions suppose you start with an interval j j is also an interval in r suppose u from j to i is differentiable at the point t in j and you have a function f from i to rn that is differentiable at the point u of t then the composite function f composed with u is differentiable at t with the derivative f prime of u of t into u prime of t okay so note u prime of t would be a number uh, f prime of u of t would be a vector so this is a number times a vector which is a vector which is what is to be expected because f composed with u starts at j and ends with rn so it's a vector valued function of a scalar variable again i'm not going to prove this this is again left for you as an exercise as an easy exercise if i might have now so far i have said that everything goes through in an easy way this is all extensions of the familiar facts from calculus but one fact is not true the mean value theorem in its direct formulation is actually false and i want you to work this exercise out show that the mean value theorem is false for vector valued functions by considering the function f of t equal to cos t sin t on the interval r i'm not going to say anything more as to what exactly mean i mean by the mean value theorem because that will spoil the surprise please work out this exercise it's very interesting so this concludes this basic video on vector valued functions of a scalar variable and you're watching this course on real analysis